Alright, so we're going to do a broad review here for Torque for Rocket League. Uh, one thing to note when we're doing Rocket League reviews, mechanics are the things I care the least about. They're things you need to be working on on your own. Uh, I will mention, obviously, when there's major implication to not being able to execute something that we want effectively. Uh, but really what we're looking for is being clean on rotations, learning when to aggress, when to not aggress, uh, tiny padding things like when we need to maybe take some more time to go get pads uh, versus understand when to go for boosts, when to go for rubs, uh, tiny things along those lines. But really what we want to look for is key moments that we can use to show you where you need to push yourself so that you can improve significantly faster. If you're playing the game, you're improving to some extent, but most likely you hit a plateau. After you hit that plateau, it's really hard to push past it. So pushing past it, you can do a couple ways. You can do a lot of mechanical training, a lot of drills. Uh, those really help kind of take that next level. Doing a lot of VOD reviews to make sure rotations are perfect, really clean. Uh, we can get there faster, and that's what we're trying to work on. So we we'll gonna look for opportunities where we can play a little bit faster, maybe play a bit more aggressive, uh, optimize pathing where we can. And the number one thing that I personally want to push on you guys that we want to work on right now is when we're in the attacking zone, so that half, make sure we can pressure net as much as possible. Uh, so we need to make sure we're in the right position to do that. And we'll kind of discuss why you can and can't be aggressive and things to be looking out for. Now, do you want to know, I haven't played Rocket League seriously for years. It's been a long time. And even then, the best I've ever been is nothing compared to what you guys are now. And also the game is significantly different as far as what the strategies are. Uh, so it is a significantly different game, but I've spent a lot of time over the last couple months really learning the game at a high level so I could be able to offer this kind of coaching for you guys. Uh, so that's why I also don't want it to focus too much on mechanics because I don't know how difficult certain moves are versus not at everyone's different skill levels and not really what I care about. So let's optimize our pathing and our efficiency. And comms. We'll talk about how we can do comms. All right. Oh, we already have a perfect example. Okay, uh, so everything's just pretty standard here. We go right for the Mega, 50 comes straight our way. So we have a couple options here. Uh, we can play it hard off the back or we can just kind of soft touch it. Soft touch allows two things. So you have a couple options here. You are full boost. That's the advantage, especially in threes of you going to get the Mega, is you can make really aggressive plays here. So we have a couple options. One, knock this up take it in you know go follow it up with a second touch either backboard it maybe play it off the wall hard or just soft touch whatever you want to do take it to net you have a lot of choices here uh, we're going to touch it and it ends up being a great pass i believe for jay so i'm fine with this i'm fine with us not following this if we didn't want to follow it we see actually that's ryan going up so we end up getting a nice pass for ryan this is i mean so far a really nice play now what you need to identify is you have full boost the 50 went our way in the sense that we got the benefit. So it went to our side and we get to push it to their side because they can't follow up. We are the attackers at this moment. You have full boost on the attacking team with a play coming in right now, right? Why are you not getting ready to crash the net? So what's going to happen here? Ryan's going to go up. If he's a god, he does some crazy play, makes it in. If he's an average player, he just kind of puts it on net. If he's a good player, he tries to backboard it for you. There's so many things we can do here. If he's a bad player, he whiffs. There, there's so many different things that can happen. But all four of those scenarios that I gave, we're in the wrong position for. You need to start anticipating more. We make this good play. So Ryan's going to go up. He's going to get some touch on this ball. We know what touch is going to be, but theoretically, we don't know what kind of touch it's going to be if this is happening live. You need to put yourself in a position. We're in the attacking half. You have full boost. Please go put pressure on. So we fall way out rotation here there's nothing we can do at this point we're basically playing super super defensive which is okay but this is right off the break which means they're not really set to do a counterattack. you have full boost anyway so if you do get caught past the midline they can't exactly just score on it you have full boost to catch to the ball you're gonna be okay i want you to be more aggressive you need to be sitting around up here just past the midway point just chilling most likely on the opposite side so balls on left side which means most likely the hit is gonna go across net, right? This is basic soccer principles. If you're on the left side, you're gonna hit it to the right side because there's nowhere else to go left. There's no reason for you to rotate to this side. Rotate on the opposite ball side and be ready to go. So I like to see you honestly just sitting, not even right there, we'll just do a dot, like right here, somewhere right here, just past this pad, just chilling. 
that's where you want to be right now so that you can make a play no matter what happens whether he whiffs whether he puts on net whether he backboards it whether they somehow got up there to challenge a 50 50 uh whether they both go up orange gets the clear whatever it is you need to be there the only way that you get in a negative position is if somehow ryan gets b and they just straight put it on net from this far with a pinch or something which probably won't happen and even if that does happen you have full boost and you're ready to go and you can anticipate that so let's go over all the scenarios that can happen here this can go on net they get a weak block you can crash this goes on net they get a hard clear and you can rotate and keep it back in it goes on net they get a soft clear up forward you can follow it up it goes on net they bump it up you can go up to get an extra touch to jay uh they whiff ryan misses the net it comes to this side and you clear it back in he backboards it you're here you can knock it in you see where i'm going with this right now what can we do from right here there's not a lot of things we can do so i need you to be more aggressive go up there play man see so it's right there we have a couple options ryan does get that soft touch we were talking about their team's ready to clear uh, there's not much you could have done from right here except for follow up for what this guy ends up doing so let's say he gets a, a grounded touch jay's gonna put it right back up and again you're in position to follow uh maybe this guy gets a weird angle and it bounces to you you can set up a backboard for yourself because you got full boost or for jay who's right here uh, he puts it this way jay should be able to rotate and hit it back but since we have one two three all across the left side of the field so if we draw a line down the middle from here that was a terrible line so line across the middle, we have all three of you on one side, which means that the ball's on this side, how are you gonna make any play? All your attacks are coming from one direction, which means one guy can basically zone all you off. Now, if you're on this side, you can get the ball as it comes over. Opposite side of the ball, you have full boost, go play aggressive, go, 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 go do something. Okay, so they end up getting a hard clear, which is nice, we're in position anyway, we go for the challenge. Almost a really clean play. Okay, you still have full boost, so you have a couple options here. Uh, you're currently in the one position. Jay should be rotating out to the three. Ryan should be in the two. So you're still the one. Even though you had that touch, we talked about this. The one makes a touch, and then if you have an immediate follow-up, you need to take it. You're in immediate follow-up position. You still have full boost. You're in the attacking half. You won against your guy. This guy's going to go up for it. So it means both of you guys are going to go up. If you force a 50-50, you guys should actually get a goal, most likely. Because you're in better positions to rotate. Because Ryan should be ready to follow this up. Okay, so we rotate out at full health. Ryan was there to follow up. He whiffs. J cut rotation. He whiffs. Now you're kind of forced to fall back like you are. But I do want to note that since the very start of the break, you've been way high on boost and haven't really done anything. So nice little play here. Pulled two guys out, which is fine. Now we need to rotate for boost. Okay, this is good. All right, that's also one if we run just a few seconds. So right after we get the boost, uh, a couple tiny things as far as maximizing vision, you know, using the ball cam right here to see where it is or even flicking your camera to see behind you to get a little more anticipation would help. But as soon as we get this, identify what's about to happen. We see teammates moving for it and we see them relatively out of position. You know this ball is gonna go forward. I need you up, up and out. You have full boost. What if he, Jay gets a pinch here and it can rotate all the way across the backboard? If he gets a soft touch up the middle, if he just puts it on the ground this way, no matter what, you're going to be in a position to attack. So he gets it across the wall. I need you to calm to your team. You know they're out of position. So I need you to say, hey, I'm on the right. I'm full boost something. Let him know that he doesn't have to try to do something crazy here. Let him know you're in position. Best way for him is he just kind of sets it up over the top. Uh, he could try to just soft touch it in and go for the rub, anything. But let him know you're here. And don't fall back like that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now, I know he's, Ryan feels this. He sees the pressure. This is what we're talking about. We're in the attacking zone. We're around their net. Let's crash the net. He's ready to go, which means no matter where this goes, he's going to be in an okay position to do something. I want to see you be in there too because you're in a better position than he is. I don't know how much boost he has. I know you have good boost, which means I'm assuming you're in a better position and you're on the opposite side. Again, here's the line right down the middle. It's right on Ryan. He's right in the middle where you would have an opportunity to come from the far side. That's where you want to be for these touches because if it falls loose over here, if their attention is this way, you come from the backside and play. That's what you need to be there for. I need you to be there on the opposite side with boost. And you had an opportunity to do it again and we missed it. Mm 
get rotate back. They made an okay play. Okay, there we go. Ooh, I want to see you take flight way earlier. Okay. So this is those opportunities where we want to see you start challenging yourself, right? Uh, just if you did your own VOD review for this one, I'm sure you'd identify the same thing. You have enough boost to make this play a bit better. Uh, we see two of them up, which means there's only one guy back. So all you have to do is beat him. So if this is in the air and you take flight and go, if their guy loses a 50-50, it's a goal, right? He's going to. And if he plays too passive, it's probably going to be a goal too because you're going to get a lot of momentum. The ball's already going this way, and you can high point it. So I want to see you immediately take flight here. It's hard. This is coming at a weird angle. It's coming off to the right side. You're kind of underneath it awkwardly. But you know that they're not going to be able to follow up on this, or you should know this. They're out of boost. There's no way they can make this play. So imagine if we would hit it right here. I think absolutely. If we like rewind this and pause where we are right now, if you could hit it right here, I know you can. That's a goal. Absolutely a goal. If you had left earlier, he may have seen that and wanted to fall back, but you put pressure on him. You put pressure on him, and you got to put it towards the net. That's all that matters. You guys are now in the attacking zone. And I think, absolutely, I know that with where you are right now, where this ball is, you could have easily hit this in the air. Easily. So instead, we go late and we get beat to the ball. So this is the difference right here. That was a goal. That was one of those plays you can get a goal on. I want to see you go for that. Seeing, we're checking, we see a ton going on, ball gets cleared, identify at least right now, you should hit your jump on right now. That is definitely enough time as far as human reaction to see. By this point, you should be in the air. You should have already hit X or A, whatever controller you use. Instead, we use all our boosts just to stay low and get there. And if we would have used our boost to beat it up higher, we would have completely beat him to the ball. That would have been nice. Okay, rotating offside of the ball this is good probably want to see these flips a little bit more there just more efficient okay ready to go we have a lot of options here on the touch it was our turn to go nobody else was there this is good good execution we're going for off the top this is actually a really good play so if he misses his 50 50 completely it's gonna bounce over here so we have an opportunity to score uh if he's able to kind of chip this here, it's going to pop up and over, which is also good. Not so much over, but like up and drop in front, which is really good. Uh, worst case is it does some weird pinch here and rolls out. So this is good. Good challenge. Excellent play. Uh, no, real advance wise, if you could anticipate, maybe if we were here a little bit faster, you could have done an off the wall to yourself for an extra touch. But we make this play. And that was fine. Their team was just ready for it. But that was good. I really like the touch. All right. There's a, another opportunity. So we're in the attacking zone, right? I'm observing this 50-50 really closely. Obviously, if we lose it, we got to go. But as soon as this isn't clearly won by orange, I would immediately be thinking about how can I stay aggressive here? Right here. So you need to find out where Ryan is right now. This looks like he's on net side. No, he's on far side, so we just barely missed him on the angle. Okay, yeah, he's over there. I was paying attention. So Ryan's on this side. This 50-50 is won by us, and we rotate out. This is one of those opportunities. Again, ball's on the right side. That's got on the opposite side of the field, so that wherever this ball is, we have a chance to make a play on. So instead of rotating out like he did, I would just follow this way. If you really want, you can look for the Mega on this right side or the opposite pad right over here and then rotate around if you're nervous about your boost. But instead, we rotate ball side. And just like before, we essentially had three people on the same side. Jay makes a play, he's offside, but now he's out of boost. So he would have to get boost and cut rotation when you should already be over here, ready to go. So whatever touch Ryan gets, you're in a position to pressure the net. So he makes a play, we're there to clean up bad mechanics that's okay you know just be a little bit better on that yeah so like imagine if we would have done everything that i was kind of anticipating with you rotating here you'd be here right now right and how much better is this play for you because now ryan can go up and no matter where he hits it you can just dunk it in or at least press it better so he gets a good second touch to beat his man 
and we're here to follow up. So this is a great play by Ryan. Uh, again, mechanics aren't something I really worry too much about. I know that you can work on this. This is just a bad mechanical play from you to not be able to get another touch, and that's okay. But I want to know if you were from over here, you'd have the same opportunity to make this play as well. And you could have even rotated from this side kind of down to the exact angle you are, just on the opposite side. It would have been the same play. So, again, good play by Ryan. But... We end up making the best of it for the misplay. We get the bump and get out of there, get our boost. So, solid. Okay, another one to kind of talk about. Uh, we have the extra boost. This is fine. In this case, because we know Jay's out of position, I actually like you being on ball side for defense. Uh, but we could also just be more aggressive, either on this side or opposite side. I want us to start crossing the field more, taking more space. And that's also one. Okay, so we're sitting there... As the three, right? We're defending, we're the farthest back. The whole point of being in this position isn't so much to prevent breakaways, it's that you're next man up. So Jay should be rotating out, which means this ball that they're about to hit that bounces here and goes off, that's his job. Because he's going to rotate around full boost and get a really strong play on it. Your job here is actually as the two. So whatever happens here, you're next up. I want you to anticipate this hit. So you're in a solid position, you're full boost, they get a good touch off this wall. I've seen you make some good plays. I know that as tough as this play would be to make, you should be ready for this. So instead, you know, at this point we know we're next up, so I want to anticipate where potentially this play is going to go. In my mind right now it's going towards net, so I'd want to rotate left, which you start doing. They make the counter play, and let's get ready for this. I want to see you on this ball. That's not Jay's ball, that's your ball. We're just kind of running around with no goal right now. Nice play. One more touch. Oh, I'm very upset. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> Ooh, clean play. Oh, an unlucky pinch. That's right. We're playing really well right now. Okay. So we're out. Perfect. We're there for cleanup. So this is another example that let's talk about. Not as egregious as the other ones, but we have an opportunity to be on the aggressing half. Uh, we have full boost. We just saw Jay has full boost. We don't know how much boost Ryan has, but we know he's in a position to go do something. I don't want to see you back up at all. I want to see you over this midline ready to go, or at least on it. So stay right here, right where you are. This is where you want to be. We have Ryan on the opposite side. So again, there's the midline. Ryan's on the far side. We have one on this side. You always want to favor the side the ball's on as far as your split. So one on this side, two on this side is good. Uh, so this is nice. I love this position. If I saw this without knowing what happens after this, I'd assume Blue's going to get a goal here. Because we're full boost, full boost, Ryan, I'm assuming, is full boost, and we're in the attacking zone. This should be a goal, or at least a great scoring opportunity. That's one of those, let's trust our teammate. I know it's hard to do, but I can bet you more times than not, Ryan won't whiff this, so we don't have to disengage like we do here. And more importantly, we don't have to use boost to disengage like we're doing right now. Assume that he's going to make this play, right? This is where that trust in the teammates come from. So now, knowing that he's going to hit this ball, let's make that an assumption. Where could we be that would be better? The answer is really anywhere but here. I guess over here would be worse. But if we were up here and ready to go, no matter where this touch goes, we can do something. If you're just chilling, say, on this pad on the ground, you could be ready to go. Which means if Ryan hits this up, we can go up and get the dunk. If he backboards it, we can go in for the play. If he gets a weird... 50 drop thing you can be there to make the play right here we can't do anything so again we're in the attacking zone trust that your teammate won't whiff and go up there and do something like man imagine imagine if we we were there as that hit happens and take flight and nail the shot oh my god look at that their team wasn't ready they're on the ground they have no boost they don't know what to do wasted efforts and i'm looking Okay. So their team is now have an opportunity to attack. We win the 50. Very nice. They miss again. 
We get a little rub. It's pretty good. Okay, so tiny thing. So this is all good. We just made a ton of pressure. We took a lot of their boost. We're still in the attacking zone. We're in the attacking zone. You have boost again. I don't want to see you completely always rotate out on this. Yes, you're in the three position at this point. We have one, two, and you're three. But it doesn't mean get all the way out. I want to see you be ready to turn for this and cut rotation. Because this ball, most likely, again, we're on the left side. The ball's on the left side. Most likely, assuming he doesn't whiff, the energy of the ball is going to go towards the center of the field. It's going to go this way no matter what. So their team's going to try to clear out that way, which is where your two is to clean it up, and then you can get the score. Let's see on the opposite side. Uh, we put it right on net, and it just scores. So, cool. So this is one of those, as soon as you see Jay getting ready to cut rotation. So what it was supposed to be is one, two, three. Uh, Jay's cutting, which is okay. He's on that side. Here's the midline that we keep talking about. You can just follow the pads. I want you on that side. We have two on the left. Let's get one on the right. Or at least sit on the midline so that we can make a play. Because again, basic physics. If ball's over here, it can't go that way anymore. The only way it's going to go is this way. It's just how physics work. Because as your car, it's really hard to get on the left side of this ball unless you ride the wall up. Oh, sorry. It's hard to get on the right side of the ball because you wouldn't do that. You have to ride it up the wall left. So it's going to go right. This is better. Look at this. You're in a great attacking position right now. This is perfect. This is where I want you to be in these situations. We're in the attacking zone. We're ready to go. One orange is cleared out. We're on their boost side, which means we're taking their boost. Overall, the boost on these is just getting split between everyone. So we have the advantage because you have full boost. This is where I want you to be. Perfect. Yeah, that's fine. They make a good play. That's going to happen, right? Now, if we were right over here and we were able to meet this ball, so Jay takes a shot, it gets bounced out, and we're able to meet this ball. If we hit this ball over the net, is there any chance to score? No, because we just used our boost to commit to this play, right? So being on the left side actually does nothing. We're being on this right side gave us an opportunity. All you can do in any competitive game is put yourself in the best position possible to win. Teammates don't matter. Right now, you're in the best, best possible position to win. This is good. Oh... Okay, that's a, uh, so anyway, I don't like how slow we got for this, rats on the goal. This is one of those, uh, that was a weird touch, at least in my mind, I, maybe I just haven't played enough to read that ball well. I was shocked it came off like that, but this is what we're talking about. If you were on this left side, would you have any chance really to score this? I mean, kind of coming from this offside, going away from the ball, it could have put it on for sure. But if we would have anticipated this better on this side, we could have met this high and redirected. But either way, that's just a great touch by Ryan. Their team wasn't ready for it. We get it on net and get the goal. Did Ryan really not get an assist for that? Whatever. <clears throat> I just realized your icons from uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was scary. Okay, nice pass. Easy goal. Yeah, Jay won't miss those. <laughs> and if he does, that's one of the few times I'll probably talk about mechanics because that's just simple and easy. I'm actually glad I'm actually doing water views now because I'm just seeing so many just basic things. Whoa, okay. Oh, what? What are you doing? What? What's happening here? We won't talk about that. Okay, picking up pads. This is really nice. Force that 50. You took their boost. Really nice play. We'll get ready to get out. Oh, no. Okay. So now it's going to sound like, you know, a broken record so this is awesome we win a 50 that really wasn't our ball at first so that's awesome we still their boost also awesome we start rotating out off a of ball side so everything you've done to this point is pretty much perfect we made the plays we took their boost there's no immediate touch we're trusting our teammates to make this play we're rotating out so that we're on opposite ball side this is perfect now soon as this happens 
everything changes. I don't care where Ryan is. Let's say he was right here or if he is really far back like he is right now. This is your opportunity. This is what we talk about. We're in the attacking zone. They're on the ropes. We took their boost multiple times. We've been in their side of the zone, which means we should have the boost advantage. We have the pressure advantage. We have the rotation advantage. You have full boost, and this ball is about to be in the attacking zone. I need you to rotate. I need you to cut. I need you to get in here. You have to. Instead, we immediately pull away from this fight. Like, what are we doing over here? What, what is your goal right now? I don't care what the score is. I don't care anything. I need you up here, ready to go. Make a play. No matter what happens, I want you at least sitting on this pad, facing this way, ready to go. So no matter where this ball goes, you can make the play. If they get an insane clear, that's cool. You can rotate out and get the play still. That should have been your ball. Or at the very least, we let Ryan do that, and we're sitting right here, like I said, and look at this lay. It's just going to come right there. Oh, my God. Could have beat them to it. We could have had a better chance for 50-50. Could have kept it in their attacking zone. We took their boost again, which means they have no boost. Dang. Now, I do want to know a couple things. So, we're going to start emphasizing everything we talk about. Staying more aggressive. Trying to be on the opposite side of the ball when we're in the attacking zone. Uh, stand above the midline. All that kind of stuff. Now, at first, when you're trying to implement these ideas, you're going to struggle. It's not going to be very easy. It's going to feel like it's not working great, and that's okay because you're essentially relearning the game. So be prepared for that. So understand, hopefully, we can show you in these videos how clear it is that you can have way more pressure than you're currently applying. Way more pressure. Oh, no. One, two, three. Like it's all on the same ball. Okay. <clears throat> And that's how we give up goals. <laughs> yeah, that's just a team effort fail. So Jade's comment there I actually kind of like. So he's like, he's fine being scored like that when we're all being aggressive for a ball. He doesn't like me scored him when we're all sitting back for that. I absolutely, I think, agree with that statement, especially with what we're trying to do as far as what the next level improvement for all you guys are. I absolutely agree with that statement. I'd much rather have goals that way than the other way because that way is something tangible to work on. If we're just all sitting back and get played on, it means, you know, they made good plays, good shots, we couldn't react in time, that's whatever. Making mistakes like we just made there is way better because it means we know what we need to do differently as far as communication, making sure not all three are up at once. And I'd rather you guys be on the aggression side because best way to learn is to make mistakes getting beat isn't the best way to learn making mistakes and getting beat is the best way to learn so if they're just better than you, you're not going to learn much but if you go for things that do and don't work and learn from those that's how you're going to get better so i do like that commentary from jay <clears throat> yeah your turn go up there okay <clears throat> so that's okay so what happens here uh, we're rotating out, so that means Jay's rotating, so he's the three, Ryan's the one, you're the two. So we want to be ready for this play. Um, Ryan beats his guy, and he stays for a second touch. Uh, Anticipation-wise, technically you could have gone up here, but I don't think any of us figured this ball would run the wall like this. I would have expected something across the middle of the field like you're ready for. So This is fine, but definitely something to learn from, that there are other ways that ball can come off the wall. <clears throat> Ooh. That was a great play. Great little pass. And that's game. So we'll leave it there for now because I got a lot of auto reviews to go for. Uh, so, number one thing we learned from here, of course, is making sure that we understand we want to attack from the opposite side. And especially when we're full boost, play aggressive. Don't be afraid to go up there. The where you're going to get burned is hard committing for balls as we saw in that goal against us. If too many of you guys go and commit for something, you're done. But being in an aggressive position isn't committing anything. You're just saying, I'm ready to make that play if I'm there. You being behind the midway point, you're not going to get a lot of those plays. But if you're ahead of the midway point, you can make those plays more effectively. Um, 
Just be careful when committing for things. So just because you're in the aggressive zone doesn't mean you 100% have to be aggression. It just means you're in position to make a play if one shows up.